neat combination of, of lights and middle values and darks which we we come up here in our um, in our value study and we convert that we've got lights middle values and darks so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put this up here and maybe put that where we can see it all right but the first thing i'm looking at is these light shapes and I'm bringing them up in here, and I'm saying, okay, those will be my main areas of interest. So let's just let's just take care of some of these. We don't have to draw these all in. We can create them as we go. But we have this kind of fan-shaped leaf that's coming out in different places. And so there's some here coming in off the side. So we'll give ourselves those shapes on here, but only to know where dark meets light. Alrighty. So, in watercolor, we're going to start off with uh, uh, getting our lightest areas in here and leaving some pure light. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of a, kind of a violet color here. Um, that hopefully will kind of match that a little bit. And we'll put that on this side of it. Okay, we want to let some let it do some blending on the paper as well. So we'll drop a few pinks in here and a little bit of blue. And this will be on the shadow side right up in here. But we don't really care about this edge too much because we're going to define that with the darks when we come down in here. This is we, we studied a minute ago. Okay, now let's get some maybe some while we're doing this, maybe some stronger purples. And I'll leave a few of these on this outside edge. But towards the light, I'm going to just touch a little bit of water out here on this edge and see how that kind of makes it look like it turns a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'll just soften these outside edges. And our sunlight's coming from over here. So now we have this variety and we can already see the light against the dark and see the shape starting to form a little bit. We'll touch a little bit more blue down into here and let's do the same thing down here. Get our blue in, dropping a little bit of the light red. And we look at this and say if we kind of captured sort of the, the, the lavender that we're seeing in there. Once again, I'll come over here and soften with clear water, touch it just outside of that, and let it run into it to soften these edges. And then we'll just um, let that settle in. And then let's do the same thing with the leaves. All right, I'll come down here and take this green and a little bit of light yellow. And I'm going to just let this kind of wash over these other areas where this is going to be. This is the, both the, the beautiful and fun thing of watercolor, it's also the challenging thing, is the fact that we, we can lay some of these shapes in here, and if we touch them, they're going to run together. We want to leave some of our lightest areas in here. And so right down here, where this area is, Right down here. I'm going to leave those very, very, very light and still get some greens around in here. And 
then comes the hard part, and that is sh shaping the edges of all this. I'm adding a little bit of blue to this uh, sap green down in here. And again, these will be our middle values and our lightest values. And we really don't care too much what happens down in here. We just want to get the feel of what's there. And this is kind of a little bit of a brown down across the bottom, so I'll pick up some of this quinacridone. Sienna into a very, very thin glaze, and this is the ground area that's coming up. Notice we have only light values right now, very, very light. And wherever we come to an edge and we don't know what we're going to have there, just let it fade out with clear water. Okay, just let that just kind of disappear. Now we've got our lightest of values in here. And we can start shaping all of this with the darks as soon as as soon as we uh, let this dry down a little bit, then we can start shaping them. Now, you ready to try that? <laughs> I guess. Okay, let's transfer your sketch to your paper, and then let's go ahead and uh, try to get it to this point. Now, notice where we left the lights: this side, this side, this side and pretty light down here where we've got this one. Some of these other ones will look very, very light too and we'll have to darken them more than this when we get to it. But let's go ahead and draw it up and let's get our lavenders in there, preserve some good lights, don't cover them up completely, and then we'll let that dry, then we'll pop back in here and we'll work some more on it. So let's do that. So I'm going to come in here with the greens. I've got these, um, we've already got some greens as a base, but I'm going to add to that now with kind of a wash, and I'm going to go really dark, so I'm adding a little bit of purple to this too, and that'll tie in nicely with that. But what I want to do now is come down and form these edges of these flowers. So I'm going to take this really dark dark, and I'm going to come in right from the top here, and now I'm going to shape the edges of these loop pines. And I'm shaping the right side of this one and the left side of this one. Okay, and I see that there's a random shape there as this comes up. So I want to get that. And this comes right down. I over this edge. It's dark enough that it's going to completely cover it. Dark, dark, darks is what we want in here. I'm going to grab a little bit of, of carbazol violet and then I'm going to shape just a few of these as they come down. I'm going to make it as random as we can so it doesn't look like a Christmas tree. Okay, and bring these darks. Now see how important these darks are to shape it, but we want there to be some variety in those darks. That's why I keep reaching into different colors as we go. Now I'm going to come down right here and leave the top of this flower. And I have some, see the little parts of this flower that I'm showing there that's coming through. I'm going to leave that and still shape this flower as I go. This is, once again, called the negative painting. It's where we paint the darks, but we're preserving the lights. Yeah. Paint the dark to reveal the lights. Okay. Now I'm going to carefully shape the top of this one that we have coming right up in here. And we're starting to get the feel of the, both the flowers and the leaves as we go. But when we put these uh, lights down on this side and keep it close to the, the middle values, then we come in with our darks and actually do the shaping of those flowers. So I'm going to just come to this point on this side, then I'm going to come work over here in this area a little bit. Again, I'm going to use a variety of color. We're going to drop some yellows in up here. 
and then come in with my darks and come up closer to this. We just kind of have to watch it as we go and, 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 and look at how random the, sh the shapes are as they come off the edge of that um, and make sure that we keep that random edge. And once again, I'm drawing, the, see this bead of water right here? Uh -huh. We're pulling down from that to identify the shapes of these outside leads here. And then we're going to just watch the, the triangles a little bit as we shape them. And I'm going to pull this down and see how we pull this wet bead. And we pull that down. Now, we can tip this or turn it and allow the pigment to run back. See how it's doing right there? Mm -hmm. But look at the power that we have already and, and the similarity to, to what's in this scene that we have. We're getting a few oozles up in here, that's great because we want there to be some texture up in that area. Now what we'll do is we'll just continue on in shaping the, these a little bit more, but um, We'll just have to watch this as we go. Down here we're going to have some random hard edges as well as some soft edges and we just want to give the feeling that this bottom lupine as it comes down and comes to this edge. And once again if I don't know where, I, where an edge is going to be I'll just let it fade out with clear water and leave some of these edges and I'll come back and define those later. Okay. But then we can start working up in this area. So why don't we go to that point then and And this is the pattern of watercolor right here. Is, is working from getting our lights down and then defining and refining as we go with our darker darks. Mm -hmm. So, and this is where we get the power is the, the light against the dark. And we're picking up the same feeling here that we've got in our composition over here. We're getting the same pretty much color combination that we have up there. Mm -hmm. Alrighty? Now let's just begin to move a little further along on this uh, painting. And we've, we've got in most of our darks, our darkest darks and our lightest lights. Now we're going to work on some middle values down in here and shape some of these um, leaves just a little bit as they come down into here. We want to create the idea that, that there's a lot of uh, leaf structure in here but we don't want to draw every single one of them. That would be boring and it would look funny. But let's, let's try to get some of these shapes in here, identifying some positive and some negative shapes as we work. Um, down in here we do see a few um, shapes that are uh, darker against lighter and so We'll get a few of those in here, but we want to continually shape these light areas that we see up in here against the dark. Now we've got to balance um, the light and dark as we go, so we'll continue to do that and work along in here. And that will start to build these up. We don't want them all to be the same value. They're not the same value. Some of these leaves are darker than the other ones, depending on which are catching the light. So we've just got to pay attention to that and, and, and keep working along here. And it shouldn't take us too long to, to work through this. So I'll just continue to shape these up into here. I'll pull out a few positive and negative shapes as we go. This is kind of like abstract painting in a way. We're just looking for the pattern that makes them work without making too many hard edges. We've got to have enough to, to um, 
make it read correctly, but we still have to control the values. Like this whole area down in here is actually quite quite dark, and so I'm going to go ahead and pull some of these darks down into here, and at the same time, maybe pull out a shape or two of some leaves that come through there. Got a little bit of blue down into here to add variety, and I think we're going to need a little touch of of uh, darks, a little touch of maybe we'll pull some purple in here to balance with these up in here. Now, purple with green is going to make kind of a real dark dark, but that's all right. We can live with that. All right, so we're getting the feel of these leaves coming through here without doing every single one of them. Tighten up the edge of this. And also the bottom of this one right here. And a little bit of the stock coming up and that's a little that's light. So a tiny bit of that coming up. And it's dark in these. We want our lights to be to exist right here on the side of these and a few little uh, edges on this perimeter as they come out. And I'm going to keep on working here. Let's um, bring some reds down in here where this soil is at the bottom. We want it to still be dark, but let's go ahead and get a little bit of color in there and we'll bring a little tiny bit of this pink up in here as well when we're when we're done here continue on with our negative painting Grab a little bit of this pink now, and we'll see part of this is the stock uh, that holds these flowers up. We'll pull a little bit of that color down into here. That'll give variety to our painting, and that will uh, help perk it up just a little bit. Yeah, I like how that looks. And now let me grab a little bit of blue. And we'll just darken up a touch of quinacridone coral. And I'm going to come down in here and really darken this down towards the bottom. Same thing here. And over on this side. Just a little more pink in this one. And give it just a little bit of sparkle up on those. soften a few edges here and there on these these ones that I've just added these little darker shapes and uh, soften that just slightly okay now they look a little more natural this way now I'll continue to work these darks down here uh, it's quite dark uh, quite a bit darker than this up in there so let's let's give that a shot need those darks to kind of work their way up into here and help these to stand out the tiny bit. So I've enjoyed having a student 
uh, Caitlin Stanworth in here, a high school student who spent a little bit of time with me this morning. And uh, we worked on this painting together. She also did this, the same thing. But she's a uh, high school student. She's going to be a senior this next year. And she's very serious about her art. So I gave her the opportunity to come in and spend just a little time with me uh, today and uh, work on these things together. So we appreciate her being with us and lending a little bit to this painting project today. Now I'm just going to watch these uh, greens and whites here and balance those. Some of these I feel like I need to just continue to push back slightly. And I'm just looking at those with kind of a, a squinty eye trying to say hey I want my I want my area of dominance to be up in the, uh, up in the, the flowering part here but I still want to balance the sparkle of these lights with that and, and I think it's coming together pretty well so I can just watch those values as I go from light to middle values to dark to dark I feel like I need some darks down in here and to bring this around, so so here we go. Mix a few colors out into here. Uh, pull a little bit of red out with this purple. Purple is a carbazole violet. I'm going to put some darks in here as well as up in here to make these stand out just a little bit more and what they are. Now, as we add the darks at this point, what we're doing is we're giving power to the scene. Uh, it's a term that I use to uh, talk about the dynamic uh, feeling that happens between lights and darks as we, uh, as we work them together. We, we want to have our darks, we want to have our lights, but as we bring the darkest darks against the lightest lights, boom, then something starts to happen here. So we are working um, the violet color and we're also working in these greens uh, together. And we still have that power of darks and lights, but we want the variety of color as well. I'll bring a few more of these pinks down into here. And a little bit of blue into that. I'm going to touch some purple up into here, right here. Tighten up these leaves as they come out. This will bring some power up into this area. Again, this is uh, what we call negative painting, and it's just painting the darks to reveal the lights. And we just have to watch it as we go, watch our eyes, see where we need the darks, and get these little triangles of, of light in there. Now I'll pull this back away, and I'll use some greens to do that, but up in here, I'll continue this up. Again, I'm moving into a green, darker value of green and let that just bleed its way on up. And then as we approach this area down here, I think I'll get this much stronger. It's still light, but just stronger.
if that dart needs to go just a little bit higher up in there, then we'll have what we need on this painting. Okay, now I'll just let that all blend up into this area. A little bit lighter green in there. This part right down in here in the middle, I'll go ahead and bring some middle values into that, to push some back and let some of these uh, leads come forward, but push some of them back into this space a little bit so that, that it feels just a little more natural. doing this now just it's kind of like salt and pepper just to taste where do I want those highlights to be where do I want the darks to be and so that it looks like some are recessed back and some come forward so I'm watching carefully as I paint these and to make sure that I have that balance of light and dark You know, I feel pretty comfortable with this now. I've got these lights coming forward, these other ones moving back in space, and the attention being drawn up into here. I think the only thing it lacks is just a, a few more a few more darks here and there um, to bring it out. I'm going to just soften this part slightly there and help that to dry and I'll bring a few little darks in here right in this area to make these to make these pop a little bit more just bringing a few little darks into here to add some snap to these flowers and a touch of realism to them and um, then we'll, we'll be pretty much done so what we've been doing in this now is no different than any other scene in nature we're establishing the lights and the darks controlling our light source what we see, uh, not delineating every single little shape that's there, but doing enough of it, enough detail that when the viewer comes up close, they can see it and understand it. But we want it to come off well from back far, uh, in addition to being, uh, look good up close. I'm softening a few of these little edges again, but I'm getting these darks in here where I need it. And I need some down in here this is not quite dry yet, so it's difficult to make them any darker than they are if it's, if it's not. But right underneath in this area, I need a little bit of those darks to come in here. And again, this is just what I'm feeling by looking at the, the light and the dark shapes. is isn't any kind of formula or anything else, it's just a matter of of uh, looking at it and saying, well, where do I need these darks and what do I need to have happen? But I've got this dark in here, which is a, a, a really dark green, um, a greenish blue, and I'm going to pull a few of those down into here and tighten up just a little, a tiny part of this display that's happening down in there. And this is going to make it pop even more because I'm getting light against light, light against dark, 
the dark against the light. The eye is always going to be drawn to the lights against the darkest darks. It'll, the eye will be drawn to that first. So you want to be careful with that and use it in uh, judiciously because it pulls and gives us power right into these spots. And all this that we're doing right now is just adding, adding detail uh, in just a few places. Just we just don't want to overdo it with our detail, and it's easy to do that, especially if you're having fun while you're uh, while you're painting. And I I hope you are, but uh, a lot of times I'll overdo it, and we don't want to. But we just say, oh, this is so much fun. We just kind of keep on and. Um, Right now, I just feel like we need a few things in here, and I don't want to get carried away. Now, since I've got the darks up there, I've got to bring a few of them down in this area to adjust the darks that I've already got, make it a little more powerful. But not out here, in here, in these areas. That's where we want to see this. And now you say, well, why didn't you get it that dark when you started so you don't have to come back with another layer of glazes? And the answer to that is, well, I should have. But I approach things very slowly. I'm kind of methodic, uh, methodical about how I, I bring these shapes into it and um, how I use my, my darks and lights together. I'd rather start light and work my way dark than I would... Uh, Put down the darks and and uh, not be able to get the lights back again. Okay, so I'm just going to bring a few more darks down into here, and I'm going to be done with this. I don't want to just end with some darks. I want to see those work their way down and work their way out. these that come out here, some of these leaf shapes again, I'm going to darken those. These are not light against dark, but dark against light. So this is positive painting in here, but I'll show just a few of those as this comes out to this area. these hitting the light and it looks like a nice balance a few more down in here This feels pretty good to me then, how we're looking at it right now. I'm going to um, set this aside for a minute. I'll get a little mat and put on it and see how it looks, and then I'll reevaluate it again. It's pretty dark down in here. I might need a little bit darker up in here, I'm not sure. But we'll check it out and see in a minute. Now usually I'll set uh, the painting aside and put it up on my shelf and take a look at it for a while and, and, uh, and see if I've got what I need there or if it needs more work. But this is, this is quite finished. So one of the things I often do is to slip a mat over the top of it and separate it out from the, what's around it. And that helps to give it some dignity and some respect, which I think is necessary. We've got to if we just do a painting and we just have a stack of them, that doesn't give them the respect that they need. If we put work into it, we should slap a mat on there at the very least. Or what I like to do, even more than that, 
a slip of frame and a mat on there. And look at the difference that that makes. Uh, and a minute ago, we just kind of had paint on paper, but my wife likes to say, who is a professional framer, uh, when you bring it into me, it's paint on paper, but once it's framed and comes out of the, the shop, then it's a work of art. And uh, I think that's true. I think we need to give the paintings the respect that they deserve. So I'm pretty happy with this, and uh, I appreciate you joining Caitlin and I as we painted this uh, painting today, and she worked on hers as well. And uh, we had a fun time. So thanks for being here, and we'll see you again.